you will hear from yours truly, Lady Stacy Cole. Oh. This show is brought to you by Walker's Cafe and Grill 109 You and Drive from 12 to 5. This show is brought to you by the Ephesian Primitive Baptist Church, 1506, 22nd Avenue, North Nashville, Tennessee, 37208. This show is brought to you by Trifold Outreach Ministries. That's Trifold Outreach Ministries, 49 Dry Creek Road, Goodlesville, Tennessee. That meets in the second and fourth Sunday on Zoom at 7 p.m. And this show is brought to you by Forever Zion. That's www. ForeverZion.com Papa Roxy Jewelry For your boo, your bae, your subordinate Your significant, your cousin, your friend Your friend of me, your enemy Stacey's looking at me like, Pastor, you didn't even take a breath <laughs> I, But I know it Let me cut you up Let me cut the headphones up But that's what all of these shows are brought to you by And I'm just grateful to be in this space In this place with Lady Cole Who's an entrepreneur, who's herself who has a marvelous testimony, who, who brings to us the spirit of resilience. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's here to impact the marketplace and make this world a better place. So without further ado, we introduce some and present to others, Miss Lady Stacy Cole. Hear ye her. Oh my goodness, how you Look guys at you. doing she's today? Like, oh my goodness. <laughs> She's so modest. I'm telling you, I wasn't ready. Why not? You <laughs> weren't ready for what? I exactly. wasn't ready for well, that what, what? great intro. Well, I'm learning you. I'm telling I'm you. I'm learning you. Can I not learn you, you and can. who you are? You can. This is a practice for me. It's practice. It's practice yes. for all of us. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing about what we do. We okay. show up. Yes. So it's always practice. Mm -hmm. Jordan practice. Yeah. Larry Bird magic practice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everything is still practice. Yeah. Just show up. Yeah. We was having a conversation earlier, and because uh, I heard some a wise individuals talk about people don't show up for their future. Mm, that's important. Did you hear that? That is important. <laughs> I did not hear that, but I people think, don't yeah. show up for their future. Yeah, yeah. You have to step into it. You have to. Or so, it, or it's a missed opportunity. Yeah. yeah, and say yes. Say yes to the opportunity. Wow. Yeah, because if you know, sometimes we ask for these things we ask God hey give me this and then we say oh no I can't do that right. Right. <laughs> but that was your gift to step into and show up for whatever that was so right. when you told me today asked me today you want to come to the radio station yeah mm -hmm. yes I right. sure can right. yeah why not mm -hmm. and before we even get further into this great discussion tell us about your business and where people can reach you sure so my business is Alchemy Business Consulting, and you can find me at alchemybusinessconsulting.org. We specialize in employee attraction and retention. So we do that through talent optimization, employee benefits, and we will come in and customize a program that is going to be cost effective to you and your budget. What we do know now is a lot of small businesses are suffering from uh, keeping and retaining their key employees. What that means is, is that key employees, because of who inflation, the recession, turnover, they are bouncing all over the place. So what we will do is come in with a strategy to help you um, come up with a strategic plan to uh, implement a program to keep those employees because they are your number one customer. And we want for you to keep those people so that way you can serve the community better. Wow, that's a lot. You said it, it employee benefits. Mm -hmm. What did you say? Those three? Talent optimization. Talent optimization. Yes. Talent optimization. Yes. Say, I want to be employed. <clears throat> I have a, listen, I have a wish mm -hmm. and I have a want. Yes. But I possibly don't have the skill yeah can you work with me on that yeah is that is that a possibility that's a possibility okay what I'm what I find is a lot of employers already have the the most important staff they already have okay. they are already working for you okay. but you haven't created a culture of succession okay and so what that looks like you might have somebody that may um, be interested in let's say accounting they could be interested in doing your billing, but you never ask them what they were interested in. Uh -huh. You just put them in a place. Right. So the answer to your question is absolutely we can. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because I know skill, talent, 
I'm gifting. Yeah. I'm struggling and I'm learning as I'm learning me mm -hmm. and growing and developing me. Yeah. <clears throat> In the words of the wise lady, showing up for me. Yeah. Not for them, but for me. Yes. Uh, my skill set, my talent, and my gifts. Yes. Uh, and I, I have all of those are a culmination of who I am. Yes. And I bring them to the table. Mm -hmm. uh, human equity. Yes. Uh, but I know a lot of people sometimes have wishes and wants, <laughs> but sometimes do not have the skill. Right. Uh, I'll give this story, reading a book, uh, and growing up where I grew up in the South, we watched Charlie Brown. Did y'all ever watch Charlie Brown? Absolutely. Right. <laughs> I'm just saying, in uh, his nemesis, yeah, his alter ego, his uh, uh, his Lucifer was Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, so, <laughs> and I, I say, say that to say this, he was playing baseball and he struck out and uh, he said, he's always dreamed about making it to the big leagues. Mm -hmm. And Lucy, to her chagrin, was like, uh, you thinking too far ahead, Charlie, <laughs> too far ahead. She said, uh, next time, the next inning, when you go out to the mound, how about you just walk around it without tripping? Yeah. <laughs> Let's not even worry about the mix. You, you, you're thinking too big. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because he hadn't developed his skills. Yes, yeah. And it's not that he could not stop dreaming, mm -hmm. but oftentimes in small and large places, a lot of times people do not de develop their skill set. Yes. They might be gifted. Yes. They might be talented, but mm -hmm. are you skilled? Yeah. Your gift is one thing. Your talent is something else, but your skill set matters. Yeah. Because I maximize potential on all three of them, let me say that. Mm -hmm. But I know a lot of Charlie Browns who can't walk out without tripping. So yes. Getting to the next level yeah. is very, it's a demand yeah. in the workforce, Absolutely. the workplace. And it becomes it becomes practice. Okay. So I'm going to give you practice. an example. Practice. I'm going to give you an example. Um, there is a, a particular company, I won't name a name, and they were looking for a number of different positions. And so they hired a person that had a human resource background. Okay. Okay, so they needed a billing person. Okay. The great thing about this person, they were going to school because they were from another country and they didn't think that their human resources background was relevant because they had, they went to massage therapy school. Okay. Well, it turns out after further investigation, she has a background in human resources. Um, she knows how to create performance reviews. Um, because of her interest, she knows how to do billing and coding. And so instead of the employer um, just sticking her in one position, they were able to capitalize on a number of different positions with this one employee. And that's how you can leverage um, the staff that you already have but it first starts with culture yeah you said that creating yeah. a culture of succession yes yeah, it starts succession in. as mm -hmm. in i pass the baton to you or succession mean what does succession mean so, uh, so that yeah. there that yeah, is exactly. succession yeah so hey yeah, i know i know i need to pass it to stacy or yes. stacy passes it to cornelius as succession yes so you can you're what you just described was a family or uh, somebody that's passing the baton. I'm gonna pass this business right on over to you, Cornelius, and I want you to do your thing. But succession planning within a company is, hey, you're gonna start at the front desk, but I'm also going to start you um, start teaching you about billing and coding. I'm gonna start you learning the back office, or I'm going to start you find out what your specific interests are, so that way I can begin to leverage those things within the organization instead of hey I'm going to hire a person and stick them at the front and that person over time because they are not happy begins not to perform um, they begin to they uh, ultimately after a while begin to leave but if you create a performance succession plan for them they will slowly move up from hey front office to billing to back office to accounting and now you have this person that has uh, garner loyalty to you as a business owner and they want to make you happy they want to make you happy because not only did you just hey, put them in a position that they might live and die in 
But em employees are no longer doing that. Right. Okay. Is that good? <clears throat> What what living and die? <laughs> no, no. What's that? <laughs> like, is that good? I mean, and the reason why I'm being facetious in this point and being practical too, a lot of that happens in churches. Mm -hmm. We don't have succession plans mm -hmm. in place, and I know the autonomy and some of the ideas that we have as it relates to that organizational structure, but. I heard of another wise person say, once you get a commitment from a person or people, that should be ongoing training. Oh, yes. You shouldn't get a commitment and then leave them hanging. Yeah. So, you know, you talk about capitalizing on people's skills. Yes. People's gifts. Yes. And people's talent. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, uh, where I serve, not so much where I serve, but the culture. Yeah. That's the word we're looking at. Culture. culture. So help me develop and define a succession driven culture. Yes. Is that a is that a this is okay question? Absolutely. That's a great that's a great question. But it always starts at the top. So if you're looking at a top down and not out um, wide, that's a challenge in itself. Because now you're looking, hey, I am the one all, the be all, and you're not asking any questions. But people want you to talk to them and not uh -huh. at them, right? Say that again. You're not asking any questions. Yeah, you're not asking any questions. Yeah. You want to ask questions of the people and identify what they mean. We can't, we can no longer exist in a culture, period, uh, where we have office employees, where we are teaching them with military style, 1800 military style training, coaching, and teaching. That's in the past. You know, that's way in the past. We have a different demographic that okay. requires you to talk to them and not at them by asking them questions, getting them engaged in your community, the community that you want to create at whatever organization. So if you want it to be fun, you make it fun. That might re require, I'm a little old school. So I grew up, um, I went to a business school and so I've been wearing business professional wear since I was 15 years old, okay. Can't believe it. Business professional wear, 15 I years old. It. I'm telling you, wearing suits and what you heels have on. Yeah. and what I have on. So it's uncomfortable at times for me to go into a business and be in jeans or a polo shirt. It's a blasphemy. It's a what <laughs> jacket. I'm usually, as they used to say, suited and booted. I have to make adjustments because the culture requires me to be a lot more laid back so that way I can talk to the people because the two people don't want to talk to the lady that's in the suit. Okay. You, you're not touchable. Okay. Presumably. That's what they assume. Presumably. Yeah. Yeah, but you are. Not, yeah. Not knowing that you are very touchable. Mm -hmm. You are very approachable and yeah. you're transparent. Yes. In a good way. Because I know we can start dealing with transparency. Again. Yeah. And it can really go left field. Yeah. So we're talking about today developing a culture of succession. You said, number one, start from the top. Yes. That leader, he or her or them, they, whatever, yes. needs to be asking questions. They need to ask questions of um, their employees if they have them. If you have employees, ask questions of them. They'll tell you why they're leaving. You know, I don't like it here. You yell at me or you're talking at me. You're not talking to me. But first, the owner or the business professional leader, they have to establish um, what their benchmarks are and then make fun around it. Uh, around it. Um, Slow down, because <laughs> somebody's listening, 615-242-7760. That's 615-242-7760. You said, create your benchmarks. Yes. Or... <laughs> Your company vision. So what your, yeah. your the vision. So let's use. Well, I, I've never worked in a church, but I'm assuming it's, 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 it's an organization. Okay, let's it can be very uh, dictatorial. Okay, let's say it's very dictatorial. Okay, so talk, talk talking at not talking yes, to. Yes, and so I would say, okay, let's look at that model. Is that model 
conducive to what we want to do. So our benchmarks are, hey, we want to increase our uh, community population. We want to uh, in increase our visitors here on Sunday. Okay. We want to increase the people um, for Bible study. We want people to join the choir and things like that. And what you then want to identify is, hey, how do I go about getting the types of people? Oh, what I hear a lot from some organizations, um, religious organizations, is, hey, we want the youth to come in. Well, let's ask a question. And that's where you have to start asking yourself some questions. Well, how do you get the youth to come in? And can we use what we used in the past to get the youth to come in? Now, in identifying that, what you then want to do is get some board people, right? Some people to have a discussion, some visionaries, right? Visionaries. But you don't want in, in the box visionaries. I want the people that come up with the crazy ideas and say, no, we can't put, we can't have church on, on the lake. Well, why not? But you want to think about those. How come we can't have church in McDonald's? I don't know. But those are some of the ideas because once you start coming in with those ideas, your brain begins to expand, getting some youth involved into it, asking them, how do you want to see it? And they will tell you how they want it to look and feel. This goes, it doesn't matter whether, whether it's a religious organization or a dental office, or it doesn't really matter. You begin to ask questions and then you create a model that drops down into the organization where it becomes a lot more engaging and involved. Expand the brain. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. I've never heard that. Expand. So when I ask the questions that are relevant, real, and redemptive, the brain expands. Mm -hmm. The think tank expands. Yes. So there's a possibility in my leadership in the event I'm not asking the questions, I'm not expanding the brain, therefore nobody's thinking mm -hmm. of the next. And when I don't think of the next, by default, I look to the past for exactly. my success and graces, yeah. which is a fallen church, mm -hmm. quote unquote. Wow. Hmm. Expand. Somebody, did you hear that? expand the brain by asking questions ask questions and then get people around you i say release all ego if you want to scale release mm. your ego you have to release all i i've been doing this for 28 years i've been doing this for 32 years well it's not working today so that means that you have to fix and let go of that so that way you can look towards the future so you, you've given us a challenge today. <laughs> a lot to expand the brain, ask questions, yes. create a success-driven culture. So number one, it's by expanding the brain. Number two, by releasing the ego. Mm -hmm. Release your ego. Yes. If I'm going to create a... Oh, identify the target first. Yeah. Yeah. Third, first, identify your target or your benchmarks. Yeah. Huh. Benchmarks, brains, and ego. So mm -hmm. three words. What does a benchmark look like for any organization that you work for? Hmm. Oh, that's good. So I, I actually just uh, record. Or, or do you have any personal benchmarks? What's your personal benchmark? Oh, I let's do. <clears throat> so talk about your personal first. So let's talk about my personal. So there is an, an event mm -hmm. that I want to bring to Nashville. Right. Okay. There is a... It's called a fight back fair. A, a fight back fair. Fight back fair. Okay. Okay. And it was started in New York City uh -huh. with a, a couple of attorneys um, to help support victims. No, let me rephrase that. Survivors, Survivors. of sexual assault and domestic violence. Okay. okay. And it's a play on words because we want you to fight back but we want you to fight back fairly. And how you do that okay. is engaging in a couple of things. You want to definitely- Fight back fair. Fight back fair. It's a one day fair where we um, invited attorneys mm -hmm. that are going to answer your questions if you are so decide to um, ask questions about, hey, if I was to actually go and press charges against XYZ person who did this to me. 
Um, in addition to that, we brought in some um, self-defense class. So the fight back fair. Fight back fair. So fight we had some fair. fight back. Um, so my benchmark right now is was first to get in contact with the attorneys that first started that organization in New York City. Uh, the second thing was to garner their approval for me to be able to do that here uh -huh. in Nashville and begin to uh, establish and build relationships with organizations that su uh, support domestic violence and sexual assault oh. um, here in Nashville. And I've started doing that just by going to different community events. Um, and so um, I've set a tentative date of uh, early to mid-October. Right. And that kind of gives me some opportunity to build some relationships, get some people. I've talked to um, a lady that does Krav Maga uh, self-defense and teaches you how to defend yourself. I've talked to a uh, sexual assault and domestic violence place out in uh, Murfreesboro who said, hey, we got some support. Uh, your support, whatever you need me to do. I've also uh, spoken to a couple of uh, not-for-profits okay. um, because we're going to need a space, mm. um, some donations and some food and to get the word out. So that's uh, uh, how I benchmark that. So I walk through that. <laughs> See, when I, I heard Fight Back Fair, I'm thinking fight back fair is in going to the state fair. Mm -hmm. You know, I wasn't thinking of fighting back fair mm -hmm. as an emotional. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. then you help unpack that yeah. for me because I'm like fight back fair. Okay, that's that's not fair. Yeah. Everybody's gonna come and fight. <laughs> yeah. Back. Yeah. Which that's yeah. true too. That's true too. Yeah. But fight back fair. That's mm -hmm. um, good. 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 I like that. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Wow benchmark for you and so you got the benchmark yeah you talk in your fight back fair oh we only got like three minutes yeah at what point did you release your own ego and your own benchmark oh my goodness it's a work in progress oh, okay. yeah that those are healing topics and okay, you okay. don't release those things overnight okay. because they you've been conditioned I need to have Walk around with that ego. <laughs> That's healing. That's healing. Yeah. So, so I, I, I'm going to make the assumption that you and I will finish this conversation at another time, huh? Absolutely. Of course, of course. Talking about the fight back there. Yeah. So for those individuals that like me thought it was just going to be a bunch of people fighting back, <laughs> <laughs> and we was going to do it fair style. You hear me? Just show up at the background and let's fight back fair. That's what I was thinking until she had to unpack that. But in the words of Alan Greenspan, I know you think you understand what you thought I said. But I'm not sure that what I said is what what you what I meant. Yeah. What you heard is what I meant. Yeah, I'm not sure. I know you think you understand what you thought I said, but I'm not sure that what you heard is what I meant. Yeah, that's how that goes. Fight back fair. Wow, that's that's an awesome thing. Expanding the brain. Yeah. I mean, we we'll do this, y'all. We, we got to bring her back. I'm just like, we got to bring her back. Um, personally, where do I expand my brain? I answer for me. Then I'll pitch it to you. It's like a daily routine now. Mm -hmm. I have to get up and show up and say, I have to learn something. I have to do something. I have to dump something. Mm -hmm. Like even this is expanding my brain yeah. because we outside the box. Yeah. Like this was, there's no script right now. Yeah. It's like you live in the moment mm -hmm. and you're listening. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you say, I'm hanging on to certain things. Yeah. It's like, okay, she said this. Let's look at, I expand my brain with that daily discipline. Yeah. That's why I get up and do what I do. Mm -hmm. And I know, I know a lot of people who do not get up and have a routine to expand their brain. Yes. Yeah. So the plan of succession for me looks like this. I'm training now leaders mm -hmm. in the event that things happen that not, we don't, when the baton is passed, yeah. the tempo doesn't change. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's what you don't want. Yeah. Like when the tempo gets too slow, mm -hmm. it throws everything off. When the tempo is too fast, it throws everything off. So creating an atmosphere now where individuals uh, feel the weight of leadership. Yeah. Yeah, they yeah. feel it like, oh yeah, this is what this is. The, you have to own some of this mm -hmm. now, and hopefully that. It, well, I know it's expanding their brains because of the conversation, yeah. the questions that are being raised. Yeah. you're delegating. Yeah, yeah, and duplicating. Yeah, 
in yeah. order to grow and expand. Yeah, uh, delegate yeah. and duplicate. Mm -hmm. Can we use those? Absolutely. Yeah, let's delegate and duplicate. Absolutely. Just don't delegate, duplicate. Yeah. yeah. And I don't need another me. I need you to be the best version of you. Absolutely. Yeah. Because you can't be me, Absolutely. and I can't be you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I think we force our personalities. You can't do that. And you can't, but we do that. Yeah. I want another me. You don't need another me. Yeah. yeah. God only created this little version of me. Listen, <laughs> yeah, fearfully and wonderfully made. Listen, y'all, we've had an awesome conversation with Lady Stacy Cole. Fight back fair. I will be mentioning it, mentioning it until the event. Thank you for being on with us, Lady, Lady Stacy. That part. Uh, that, that part. That part. Where can they find you again? Yes, uh, I'm alchemybusinessconsulting.org. My number is 615-809-1615. And that's Stacy. Say that number again. 615-809-1615. Thank you for tuning in to The Yak. It is the Yolanda and Cornelia Show. Oh, what's up? Hello. What's up, people? I'm telling you, I'm going to have to put a dove on your back. <laughs> <laughs> Looking out.